Ladies and gentlemen, podcast listeners of all ages, are you bored with traditional and dull real estate content? Yes! Do you want to be entertained by the most successful, innovative, and forward-thinking industry professionals? Yes! Do you want to elevate your business, be challenged to take action, and raise the bar in your personal and business dojo? Yes! Now welcome your ninja host, Jeff Fitzer. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with Mr. Greg Haig. Ironically, we're wearing the same clothes we were wearing when we were Facebook Live. Uh, (laughs) If you watched the Facebook Live that we did, we basically touched on why I am speaking to Mr. Haig right now, who is a Arizona real estate broker and attorney. 50 years plus in the business. He is the founder of the Stop Zillow Movement, also known as the Plan to Save Real Estate. Also a trainer through his platform called Real Estate Mavericks. And I am going to let him introduce himself again. And then we are going to dive deeper into what this is all about. I'm going to pose some questions at him uh, that I think will be most relevant to you, the real estate agents, and why you guys should all get involved in this movement. So without further ado, Mr. Haig, take it away. Hey, thank you, Jeff. It's such a pleasure to be on your show. And yeah, I've been in the business a long time. Let's not say over 50 years. Let's just hold it at that. And we're going to keep it at that. And it's not going to change as the years go on. And I was fortunate to have grown up in the business. My mom was a realtor. My dad was a realtor. My aunts and uncles were realtors. My wife is a realtor. My kids are realtors. And I want the future of real estate to have the same opportunities that it had for me and my family going back almost 70 years. And I believe that if certain things continue the way they are, that will not be the case. And that's what I hope we'll be talking about today, Jeff. Absolutely. So can you tell everyone who is watching, first of all, give them the background of why you decided to start the Stop Zillow movement. And then from there, let's go into a deeper dive of what they can expect from the website. Yes, happy to. I believe that going back many years when our industry decided to give any Tom, Dick and Harry, any third party website access to our listing data, that that was not only the biggest mistake in real estate history, Jeff, that was the biggest mistake in business history ever. Because you see, when we gave up our listing data, I know what we thought. I know what our NAR and MLS leaders thought back then. When I say I know, I suspect what they thought. And that was, what the heck? If we let all these websites out there, and Zillow was nothing back then. Zillow was just one of many. Zillow just happened to be the one that built its brand the best. Our thinking was that if we let a lot of websites have access to our listing data, that'll be just that many more websites that can draw buyers' eyes and help us sell our homes. I get that. Definitely logical thinking at the time. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, what happened is these companies, and we'll use Zillow as an example because I believe they're the worst example of what happened or the best example of what happened wrong. Zillow, instead of building a platform to help us sell our listings, they built a platform that used our listings, used our listings to end up capturing our buyers and selling them back to us. We thought it would be good to have a platform like Zillow to help us sell our listings. And actually, in my view, and I believe a lot of realtors feel as I do, that Zillow doesn't not only not help us, they actually hurt us in the sale of our listings and they mislead, that firm misleads buyers in the process. Let me give you some examples, tangible examples. If you were building a platform to help yourself sell your listings, Would you have it be such that it posted a valuation, an automated, an automated, an AVM, automated valuation model next to your seller's asking prices that may not be consistent with your seller's asking price? I mean, think about this, Jeff. You list a home, one of the agents who you service, who you service with your mortgage company, you list a home and they run an ad on the home and the seller's asking $495,000. Let's say the agent puts their own opinion of value in the ad next to their seller's asking price. And it says, oh, by the way, I think this is worth $405,000. Now, I will bet you the Missouri Department of Real Estate would get in the car, drive out, and take that agent's license off the wall and say, you're too stupid to deserve a hearing if you're actually going out and contradicting your seller's asking price. You are their agent. And yet, 
because Zillow has the buyers, we know they do that with their estimates. We are handcuffed into uploading our listings to that website. We're also handcuffed into allowing them to post other agents next to our listings, Jeff, agents who not only have never seen our listings, agents in many cases because it's just a rotation who don't even know they're posted next to our listings and who are what? Likely in many cases because they don't have a clue when a buyer inquires about one of our listings to switch them over to their own listings. So my point is, we all know the blemishes, we all know these things that Zillow does that actually misleads buyers with respect to value, misleads buyers into believing the agents that are posted next to listings are probably knowledgeable about those listings. If I were a buyer, I'd certainly think that. We know that it's logically transparent that buyers would be misled by inaccurate valuations and by agents who are portrayed to be knowledgeable about a home. The problem is it not only hurts buyers, it hurts sellers because sellers lose sales or end up selling for less. And what it does to our profession, in my view, are three things. Number one, it discredits us because the public doesn't really realize that we're not related to Zillow. These are consumers. They don't know. They would presume that there's a symbiotic, friendly relationship, or maybe we own part of Zillow. We don't, of course. The second thing it does is cost us a bundle. It costs us a fortune in lead fees to get buyers who used to come to us directly. And the third thing it does is by losing our buyers, by allowing Zillow to use our listings to capture our buyers, we actually now are in jeopardy of losing our listings because he or she who controls the buyers actually has the power to start taking the listings, getting sellers to come there, and then picking the agents that end up getting those listings. And in fact, that's what Zillow is doing with instant offers. So I started the Stop Zillow movement. You can check it out at stopzillow.com. And I started it for two reasons. Number one, to make the world aware of what Zillow is doing to our profession and to consumers. And number two, and this is the bigger goal, to develop an alternative, to come up with a solution, to do something that a year from now, two years from now, we're doing more than complaining. We're doing more than lamenting. We're doing something about it. And that's what we're doing there at StopZillow.com, also known as the plan to save real estate, Jeff. Fantastic. So tell us more about what this platform is going to do for them. So two things that, that really jump out at me that you point out is obviously everybody knows that if we're attacking Zillow here, essentially, that the estimates are not accurate. They're, they're really not accurate in our market. And I'm sure a lot of people say that in a lot of markets. Number two, it's interesting. I never really thought about it, but you're right. It's a pay to play. So those agents that are listed on that side of the screen have no knowledge of the listing whatsoever, which is a misrepresentation. So what will the site that you're creating or the platform that you're creating do to combat this specifically? What is it that they can look for, which is a compelling reason for them to say, you know what, I'm not just going to listen to these guys talk. I'm not just going to watch their Facebook live. I'm not just going to watch this interview and I'm just going to go donate money because it sounds cool. Tell me more about it. Tell me why this is going to be a game changer. You bet. Well, first of all, at StopZillow.com, we have a crowdfunding campaign, and that's designed to do two things. Number one is not to raise money. Now, that's weird. How would you say a crowdfunding campaign, number one goal is not to raise money? But that is not the number one goal. We're funding this. This thing is happening. The number one goal is to get agent engagement, to have a place where agents can go, put a little bit, teeny little bit of skin in the game. I mean, like a lunch out's worth of money in the game in order to demo and use this technology we've developed, which I'll talk about in a minute, and prove that it does what I'm going to talk about in a minute. So that's the number one goal. And then the number two goal is simply to defray some of the cost of developing this multi-hundred thousand dollar uh, platform with the marketing to go with it. It's a extremely expensive proposition, so it'll defray some of the cost. Now, what are we doing? What's the point? The point, in my view, is we have to look at it as a process. How do we recapture the kind of control that we used to have? And I say control in a good way. People tend to think that control is always bad. Oh, you want to take back control. Well, sometimes having control is a good thing because I remember pre-Zillow days, 
in my view, buyers got much more timely and accurate information because they were dealing directly with agents and getting the information directly from agents. Sellers were represented better because they didn't have inaccurate estimates and pay for leads agents sitting next to their listings. And the real estate profession, in my view, didn't have a black eye because it was affiliated with firms that were using their listings to capture leads rather than trying to help them sell those listings. So what we decided this is a large group of us together, real estate people, not tech people. We hired the tech people. Is that the first goal, Jeff, should be to give every real estate agent who wants to try this, goes in and pitches in 25 bucks, gets access to it, to give them a vehicle where in their market, in their neighborhood, they could attract buyers away from Zillow. That they could show buyers, home buyers who are looking right now, when we launched this February 19th, in their market, where they could show them that there was an enormous advantage, enormous advantage, if they used this website, these smartphone apps, the ones that we're going to distribute to agents, as opposed to going to Zillow. So that was the goal, mainly to arm, to arm. Think of it as like a heavy duty <laughs> armament here to arm every real estate agent in the country with what they're going to need to start taking buyers off of Zillow. And it's going to have two big benefits. Number one is the agents who use it should be able to start making additional sales and additional commissions right away. I mean, wait till you see this. We demoed it this morning. It is so good. I mean, buyers are going to flip when they see this. And the number two goal is long-term, when hundreds of thousands of agents are using it, then it can become the website that this industry needs. It can become the new official website of the real estate profession. And in fact, if you go to stopzilla.com and you look at our plan, we're planning a securities offering down the road where control of this will be turned over to realtors who can invest and be owners for as little as a hundred dollars elect their board of directors have their managers have their ceo not going to be me to hire people to run this thing and no longer be beholden to third-party websites and quite frankly no longer be in jeopardy of having the trade organization that supposedly represents them, sell off their website and brand right out from under them, which is what NAR did with Realtor.com. So that's what we're doing, creating a technology and a tool that on February 19th, real estate agents who go in and contribute as little as 25 bucks at StopZilla.com will have access to. And then, you know, they will be the ones. I'm going to shut up. Everyone who's using this will be the ones who will speak up and they're going to either say, Greg was full of crap and it doesn't work at all, or they're going to say, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. I mean, wow, what a difference. We're going to be able to take back control of the buyers. And because we have the buyers, we're going to be able to keep our sellers. So the proof will be in the pudding. And all you have to do is go in and flip in 25 bucks. And come February 19th, you'll be the one to say whether what I'm saying, in fact, comes true. Fantastic. So you mentioned February 19th. That's the launch. What can a real estate agent expect at that time? They can expect to get access. We'll have a team on. We're having a website launch party at my home up here in Scottsdale on February 17th. That's a Saturday night. We have real estate agents and company owners and trainers and speakers flying in from all over the country to attend. That night on the 17th, everybody who goes in and it's part of our crowdfunding campaign will get access to a live video stream where they will see the unveiling of what we call the secret sauce, the business model, the technology, the commercials, everything they'll get access to. That will be available to be seen. Or if you want to go in and sign up and come to the website launch party, you can do that on the website as well. And then on the 19th, that's when everyone who signs up will get access. We have a team on duty. They'll be distributing this to everyone. And then we'll have all that week, we'll have training going on every day, showing everyone how to use it. Awesome. So I think a question that pops into my mind is, and I don't know if you've said this, but how long you have been putting this out there. And it's, I know it's been months, if not longer than that. What are some of the objections that you're getting as to why this may not work? Almost as a way of heading off the questions that we know we're going to receive in our market or when we present this to brokers and real estate agents, what are a couple of the top objections for why people have presented to you and how you respond to those objections of why this may not work? Okay. Well, if I had to name the top two, the by far and away, the 
the biggest, we'll call it, objection or concern is, Greg, how do you take on a $7.5 billion corporation? I mean, that's the biggie. I mean, we know we need it. We'd love to have it. We'd love to have control of our buyers. We'd rather not have to pay middleman fees to get access to buyers who come to us directly. I mean, virtually everybody feels that way. There's no disagreement there. It's not a matter as much of an objection, Jeff, as it is how do you do this? Zillow is iconic. Everybody knows about Zillow. How do you take on a seven and a half billion dollar corporation? Well, my view of that is everything started somewhere. Uber started somewhere. Amazon started somewhere. Expedia started somewhere. That's how you do it. You just start and then you dig in and you positively know that you're doing something right, doing something better, and you stay with it until it happens. Quite frankly, me and my team, that's what we've done since we started this. I mean, we started this the end of May, and here we are the end of the year. And I mean, we're only a couple of months away from actually going head on head with Zillow and taking their buyers away. So that's bottom line is, but we've been working nonstop, and I mean seven day weeks, I took one day off in the past seven or eight months and I'm not looking for a gold star. I did it because I wanted to. Took one day off and that was to go and host my nephew's wedding. So that's how you do it. So the number one objection is how do you take on a big corporation like that? And you do it just by starting one way with one model and you dig in and you make it happen. The second biggest concern would be, well, Greg, I'm a buyer's agent. How does this help me as a buyer's agent? If I don't have listings, then how do I use this technology to attract buyers? Well, no question, this is designed to help people who have listings attract buyers. You need, in our world of real estate, it takes listings to attract buyers. People who've been in the business know that the best way to have buyers is to do what? Have listings, buyers go where the inventory is. It's true with cars, it's true with furniture, it's true with real estate. It's true with Amazon. Amazon has big inventory, so that's why people go there. But even with that objection, where, you, where I've had many emails, where Greg, I'm a buyer's agent, I really don't list property, how does this benefit me? I say it benefits you enormously, and here's why. Because the listing agents with this system, those who list even a home, one home, truly, you wait till you see this, going to be slammed with buyers, and they're going to need buyer partners. My whole life, I've been a listing agent, not a buyer agent. Nothing wrong with being a buyer agent, just I decided to be a listing agent. I've always surrounded myself with a team of buyer agents. My company, we have listing agents, buyer agents. And the bottom line is, what a great feed line of business for buyer agents where the listing agents feed off all the buyers that are attracted to their listings. So those would be the two biggest objections and those would be my answers, Jeff. How do we get to be a part of this? Well, number one, just go to stopzillow.com and Look at the video, look at what we're doing there and contribute 25 bucks. If you want to contribute more, that'd be great. We have a number of perks and you can see a lot of people have contributed quite a bit. In fact, I gave a talk last Friday for wonderful company, the Career Compass out in California, largest training organization in California, gave a talk for them in Los Angeles and right in the audience, right while I was speaking, one of the agents went in and contributed a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. I didn't realize until after the talk and they came up to me and I said, that's so nice. It's unbelievable. And it turns out that he is a director of CAR. I believe she is an NAR director. And she said, Greg, after hearing this, number one, we wanted to contribute a thousand dollars. And number two, I am a vocal person and I'm going to be going back and waking up NAR to the fact that they need to get behind this. So just go in and contribute 25 bucks. And then number two, share. I'm not looking for a lot of money from anybody. 25 bucks is fine. That's it. Contribute 25 bucks. Only contribute more if you want the perks, the other perks that are on there, and then share it. The real key here, Jeff, is engagement. Get everybody involved. The only way that we're really going to recapture our buyers in mass is if we all come together under one umbrella. There could be a number of things we could do. This model we have, we could have a different model. There's probably another model. The one we have, I think, is like, it rocks. But that isn't as important. The model has to work. But what's most important is that all realtors come together under one umbrella. And so the second thing is share. Get galvanized interest. You know, we're clearly the leaders in this, the Stopzilla movement, what we're doing. Projects like Upstream, $15 million, multiple years later, gone nowhere. Inman News reports, the last thing I read is they ought to just 
hang up their boots and go home, waste of money by NAR. So what do you do? Contribute 25 bucks to get access yourself, share it, get other people involved. I'll say this last thing, bookstore owners, they didn't have to all end up going out of business. If bookstore owners back when Amazon launched, and when Amazon, of course, everybody knows when they, I think most everybody knows when they launched, it was really just an online bookstore. And if bookstore owners had quickly come together under one umbrella and one website, Amazon probably wouldn't even exist. They could have blown Amazon out overnight. They had access to the books and they had access to all the people who liked books in their database. They had credit cards. And yet nobody brought them together. There was no strong leadership. Same with travel agents. When Expedia came out, and oh, by the way, one of the founders of Zillow, one of the founders of Zillow, Rich Barton, he happened to be the founder of Expedia, CEO of Expedia that took the travel agents out of business. Might that not give somebody a clue as to what they have in mind up there behind closed doors? Bottom line is get involved, share this, and remember the reason the travel industry, the reason the bookstore industry were disrupted the way they were is because they didn't come together under one umbrella. That's what we need to get done. And that resonates. Before we finish up, I do have one question that I'm pretty confident I'm going to get or we're going to get, which is what I would probably call the elephant in the room is, what's in this for you? Nobody goes out of their way to do something this innovative, this awesome, unless they have the intent of making a crap ton of money. Why should they believe otherwise? Oh, I hope I do. Every realtor can buy into this thing. I'm going to put substantial money into this thing. And I hope that that stock goes up like 50 times in value. And I make a whole crap load of money because if I'm doing it, every other realtor out there who invested will be making it as well. That's number one. But I don't need the money. I mean, I'm very well off financial. Anybody can Google me and they'll see that. But hey, if I make a crap load of money, so what? So will everybody else and those who stand on the sidelines and don't get involved in this and they don't, too bad on them. So nothing wrong with making money. I think making money is a good thing. If you're doing a good thing, and we clearly are. And if I make money, everybody else involved in this, realtors across the country are going to make money too. But the truth, you really want to know what drives me? It isn't making the money. At my age, are you kidding me? I live in a beautiful home up in Silverleaf and in North Scottsdale. I mean, I travel and I'll be honest with you, I've grown up in the business. My parents were in the business and I would look back in a few years and be so darn proud if I could do something this significant for the industry that's been so good to me, I'd be so darn proud of that. I know my kids and my family be proud. And I guess the corny way to say it is I'd leave a hell of a legacy. And believe me, that is the bigger driver with me. But hey, if I end up making a ton of money because I'm investing in this and other people do as well, it's a good thing, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's why I asked the question, because I think that is going to be something that's posed. So what you're saying is there's no drive behind the actual website itself this is simply going to be a potential stock gain and that's it. Simple. Oh, well, right now I'm dumping money into this and the only time that there'll be money is when we take this public and the whole goal, you can see it right on our crowdfunding site, is that this should be, I want this to be the first ever realtor-owned, realtor-managed website. I mean, owned by grassroots realtors collectively throughout the country. Now, I know that's a big task. There's 1.3 million realtors and by the way, you don't even have to be a realtor. Just be a licensed real estate agent. I don't give a crap if you're a realtor or not. Belong to NAR, don't belong to NAR. It makes no difference to me. If you're a licensed real estate agent and you service buyers and sellers, you're going to have an opportunity for as little as $100 to be an owner when the time comes and we do the securities offering. And uh, by the way, at our side, we're in their most amazing program. So bottom line is this is really going to happen and I'm staying with it till it does. Fantastic. Well, I really appreciate this. Do you have anything else that you think is relevant to add to this conversation? I feel like I've watched you enough. I've talked to you enough. I feel like this is a pretty good baseline for realtors in our market, which I don't think this is all that well known in our market. But then again, the Midwest, we're typically behind on everything. Is there anything else that you can add to this besides taking action by going to StopZillow.com, contributing, becoming a part of it, and just seeing where it takes us? And it's only 25 bucks. What is the harm there? We all blow way more than that on probably a weekly basis. Is there anything else that anybody can do or is there anything else that anybody needs to know before we uh, part ways? Nope. Here are the steps. Number one, go in, stopzillow.com or plan to save real estate.com. Same thing. Read it. Watch the video. Make sure you're on board. Make sure you believe in this. If you believe in this, contribute the 25 bucks and get access to it and try it 
and then give your feedback and tell the world that, yes, oh my gosh, this does, it really works. It takes buyers from Zillow. It's helping my business or tell the world, nope, it doesn't work. It's a piece of crap, in which case, fine. Either way, just say what you think, but go in and throw in a few bucks to give it a try and then tell the world because I know, I know that when realtors across the country try this, use the marketing we're producing, use the technology and the marketing, it takes both. You can have a better mousetrap, Jeff. You can have a better mousetrap, but don't believe in the saying that if you have a better mousetrap, the world will beat a path to your door. It won't. You have to market it. So we're giving not just the better mousetrap, but we're giving all the marketing along with it that agents can use. So just basically two things. Go in and take a $25 chance. <laughs> okay, number one. Number two, get access, try it out, and then say what you think. Fantastic. So again, February 19th. They can go in now at any point in time, contribute, which gives them access. It'll be launched on the 19th. If there's any questions that anybody have that we have not touched on today, is there a place that they can go to present questions to you? Yes, they can go to our website, stopzilla.com. You can actually leave comments with a contribution, or you can just leave comments and ask questions, and we try to answer them same day. Or they can email Jen, J-E-N-N, Jen, J-E-N-N, at realestatemavericks.com. And she handles all of the crowdfunding. She's been a right arm to me for years. And they can go that way, either way. Fantastic. Real estate agents, listen up. Take action. This is something that somebody has the, the kindness and the tenacity and the innovation to do something that you all want to complain about. You have an opportunity, a very inexpensive opportunity. Take action. Greg, Thank you very much for the time. This has been fantastic. We look forward to sharing this with our real estate partners as far as and wide as we possibly can. Thank you for taking the time. We look forward to supporting your cause and hopefully seeing a lot more of you in the uh, near future. Jeff, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. If you're looking to elevate your business, align with continual innovation and evolution, Jeff wants to talk to you. Go to FitzerMortgageTeam.com and connect with him today.